course, so you're really buying this idea of breaking out of this stuff, and breaking out, and escaping from this, you know, and not just that, but you are then dedicated to helping the rest of the planet escape from that. You see, and you, this is the war that's going on. So you, you're really bonded. You're a soldier, and you're a soldier of righteousness. And no human rights organization on earth can actually do anything. You see, they might be good, and they're trying to some, but there's no point in trying to fight famine. There's no point in trying to fight the um, oppression in Tibet. There's no point in doing it because it's just a lifetime and dramatization of what's going to be mankind's fundamental problem. So dedicate yourself to the Sea Org completely, and don't worry about all this other stuff. I graduate this, I graduate with, you know, I'm well, you know, and this and it, you know, I did well in this training program and little ceremony, you know, with little swords and giving your uniform and, you know, and then you read out this whole dedication where you're dedicating yourself to the goals and purposes of the sea organization and L1 Hubbard and whatever else, you know, all this stuff, you dedicate yourself to all this stuff. And, um, there I am then, and uh, uh, I begin working in Scientology Missions International, which is the administrative body that administers the type of organization in Stuttgart. You know, there's these ones all over the world. And fairly humdrum work I'm finding, you know, it's like I'm typing up legal documents or something. And the only thing that makes it different from a normal office job is the fact that you're on crap pay, the food is horrible. Um, uh, I even find that they're so poor as an organization that I have to buy my own uniform. So I have to buy it, you see, so maybe a couple hundred things in the pocket, and that was it, you see. And I go, okay, it's not really what it's cracked up to be, and we're going to get this thing pictured. And at that point, I'd been, I'd been doing a lot of courses, science, all of these administrative courses that you have to do, and I was finding them to be absolutely torturous. I mean, really. I don't know how to describe it. It was just like, anyway, it was just a horrible experience. Because of what I was doing, I mean, I look at it now, and I realize what I was doing is like, some of the material, in fact, most of the material you study, the ideas and the intention uh, behind the materials is pretty, Horrible, you know. When you look at an organization that says, you know, more and more impresses more and more and more of how any movement on the earth movements, you see, are all rubbish, you know, and more and more that all these Scientology is the only way to go. Um, certain worldviews are being impressed upon you, like the dislike of, you know, the fear, horror, disgust at uh, anybody who's sexually deviant, so if you're homosexual, if you're a lesbian or something. Uh, even African people, African people are a lower kind of, you know, you mean a lower type of human. There's different lower kinds of humans and there's upper kinds of humans, there's elitisms and there's, you know, you're Strange ideas. Uh, KSW, keeping Scientology working. This is the most important policy in Scientology that says essentially that there is nothing else, right? And that anything else is, is actually not just wrong, it's bad. And it's bad for you to be even thinking anything else but Scientology. Um, so that any other philosophy, any other psychology, any other sociology, whatever. It's all just dramatizations of this reactive bank. That's all it is. And so you don't, so, so your, 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 your focus is narrowed and narrowed and narrowed to just looking at these things. Medicine, you know, about medicine and psychiatry and psychology and how they're all just evil things designed by the whole track implanters to keep mankind down. You see, an uh, incredible, incredible, strange worldview is being impressed upon you. Anyway, so uh, th th this is my first year done. 
now. Um, uh, 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 I couldn't get the visa extended, so I was sent to work in England, the SMI office in England. Um, and I was getting a sense, part of me was getting very uncomfortable with the confinement of the operation and just being fully confined only to this place and only to this thought and only to this, uh, this theology, if you like, and, you know, uh, very, very confining. Um, uh, that wasn't picked up on, normally those things are picked up on very quickly, but it wasn't really picked up on in me, right? And when it is picked on, there's a very specific routine that goes on. But um, they hadn't picked it up on it, um, and so I ended up on a plane, uh, flew out, was picked up in Gatwick Airport, driven to the sea organisation base that covers the UK, and um, you know, so within a few days of being there, I realised it's same old, same old, right? There's a bit of me must have, uh, something must have broken down. And then, so, one day inside, I'm just going to take a walk, right? And so off I go for a long, long walk. It was, it was summertime, August, in leafy southern England. It was, it's a lovely area, Sussex, that area of Sussex is really, really lovely. Uh, so I'm walking, I don't know, I walked for miles, God almighty, I wasn't even thinking about it, my brain must have been in a very, very strange place, because I'm walking, uh, uh, I've since driven the route that I walked, and it's about 20 miles or something crazy like that, you know, it's massive, but I was just walking and looking at things and whatever else, and then I get back and I... Uh, actually, I went back and through East Grinstead, which is the local village to St. Hill base. Uh, and I popped into an employment agency and said, look, any jobs? And I was actually seriously thinking about leaving. But, but to try and um, describe, it, it, it was like I was, I was thinking about leaving, but I, was, but I was disconnected from myself. That's the best way I can describe it. So it was like a part of me was doing this. Right, but another part of me was just watching it happen. So it's like going back to the TRs. It was very, very, very odd. It was, it was obviously something that really messed with my mind. They really had messed with my mind, and that was not a healthy way to be. But so anyway, that was kind of so slightly disconnected. But I was part of me was able to do this. Right, anyway, they had nothing straight away there. So I'll check back. So I went back to the house, which was on. St. Hill Road, and I go there and I just, I'm just i just exhausted, so I just fall asleep. And, and then I'm shook and awake a few hours later. And Bernard said, I said, Where were you? Where were you? Where were you? You know, you're supposed to be, what's happening? And I kind of look at him and I go, ah. I go, Do you know what? I want to leave. And he goes, and he, and he just doesn't know what to do with it. You know, CR members don't leave. You don't leave the Sea Org. You don't just leave the Sea Org. I didn't realize that, but. Uh, beginning to find that out then. So he says, look, you've got to come to St. Hill. So I think it's a security guard there and we drive to St. Hill. And I'm immediately assigned to the Hubbard Communications Office, this personnel, the Sea Org Hubbard Communications Office. Then I'm assigned to this and I put on what's called messed work. This is again, Scientology is full of strange terms I'm sure you'll pick up as we go along the interview. Nest is Instead of saying, um, like normal humans, you talk about work, and obviously, you know, you talk about physical work and you talk about mental work. Okay, fine, so you administrative work or physical work. Uh, Scientology call has the term nest, matter, energy, space, and time. So if you're digging a hole, you're doing nest work, right? As opposed to thought work, right? Um, so I find myself then. Uh, you know, a small team of guys, other people who wanted to leave as well. Well, about four of us really. Um, and then we're given, we're taken out and put on physical work details, you know. And then for part of the day, and then the other part of the day, then we're um, studying all Hubbard's policies about leaving and not, uh, not either way to leave or why you won't leave. We're trying to deal with your ethics. 